when you have it. One shoot. Light them all up. Come on, fire. Hey, Roger. I've been covering the Bradley Manning court martial since it began. Since uh, December 2011, I've been making trips to Fort Meade in Maryland to cover the military court proceedings. The importance of it is that they're making an example out of a soldier for the unauthorized disclosure of classified information. And, and there are ways to come down on people who violate rules or regulations related to classified information, but they don't and have not historically always involved prosecuting someone for violating uh, the Espionage Act, for treating them as if they are spies uh, or insiders. I think he's forced us all to ask ourselves what we would do if we were in his position, and we could see that the government was clearly keeping uh, diplomatic scandals secret, uh, creating, uh, keeping corruption secret, keeping evidence of war crimes or torture secret, keeping evidence that certain civilians had been targeted and killed when they weren't enemies at all secret. And, and he was able to, from the inside, tell exactly what these different pieces of information were, and he was able to do a, a bit of an analysis to figure out that these were bits of information that the government intentionally didn't want the public to see. When you look at the collateral murder video and, and what it revealed, um, the killing of Reuters employees who uh, were out there basically doing their news jobs and uh, the fact that somebody wounded was uh, killed and shot and you can hear the bloodlust in the voices of the soldiers who are seem to be playing some kind of a video game. Oftentimes, get asked why? Why do you do this? And I have to say, like, I, I, I don't have a simple answer for it. It's the largest leaked trial in U.S. history. It is such an important trial. It has ramifications, wide ramifications, on the First Amendment and foundational principles of our government. I knew the trial was going to be conducted in secrecy and de facto secrecy, and. I felt that there was no coverage of it that was satisfying to me. You know, gave me the information, answered any of the questions that I wanted to have answered. And so I decided that I was going to transcribe it. And it started with that act. I had been covering his, his uh, confi Manning's confinement at Quantico. And so I just kept up that practice and it just kept, and then I started that timeline. This is more than about Manning and Assange and the U.S. government. I mean, the U.S. government is like a almost nebulous blob. I wanted to know which agencies, who was responsible for what decisions, and what was happening. And I, and I knew that other journalists wanted to do that too. And so I wanted to be able to do my work in a way that wasn't that that could scale. That it wouldn't just be me. That my work wouldn't just be wasted. That other people could scale off of it. We're raising awareness about uh, Manning because he's the biggest whistleblower, the most important whistleblower in our generation, at least since Daniel Ellsberg. Uh, he's raising awareness himself about uh, unknown atrocities in Iraq, uh, civilian casualties that the government counted but did not tell us about. Uh, and unfortunately, his case could set a precedent uh, as far as journalism in the U.S. It's going to be a, a pretty dangerous one, too. Uh, if he's convicted of aiding the enemy for giving documents to a media organization, that essentially criminalizes whistleblowing and uh, 
is going to alter the way uh, journalism functions in the U.S. Uh, from here on. That would essentially, uh, that would turn whistleblowing into something akin to treason. Uh, and that would, and that's already had a huge chilling uh, effect on, on sources for investigative journalists. We have national security reporters telling us pretty frequently now that uh, people are afraid to talk. Uh, and I think that uh, that's, gives some insight into why Snowden handled his leaks the way he did. President Obama has indicted twice the number of people under the Espionage Act as all previous presidents combined. Um, that includes Thomas Drake, who was the first person indicted in the latest spate of Espionage Act prosecutions. This, using the Espionage Act as an, in this unprecedented crackdown on whistleblowers is particularly nefarious because it labels whistleblowers as enemies of the state and equates whistleblowing to spying. The Espionage Act is a 1917 law that was intended to go after spies, not whistleblowers. Spies are people who intentionally give information to a foreign government in order to provide that foreign government secret information or not even or information that could hurt the United States and their intent is to hurt the United States. Whistleblowers have the exact opposite intent and I think it's clear um, from what Snowden has said his intent is from the Manning case and from Thomas Drake that whistleblowers are trying to help the country and in fact what hurts the country is the national security state engaging in massive domestic spying is um, the government torturing whistleblowers or torturing individuals and what hurts the country far more than whistleblowing disclosures is the the underlying illegality that they're protesting. Well, I think one thing that needs a little bit more emphasizing and highlighting is just what did Bradley Manning leave? What what do we what do we know uh, now in 2013 that we didn't know uh, before WikiLeaks published all this information in 2009? Uh, and what is the value? of that information. What do we know about what's going on in Guantanamo Bay? What do we know about what happened during the Iraq and Afghanistan war? What did we not know about the conduct of U.S. diplomacy and that we do know now? I think in a lot of the focus on who Bradley Manning is and uh, what WikiLeaks is and the personal drama of it, which is interesting, just what was leaked has gotten the short shrift. I typically cover federal courts. And one thing I can say about how courts martial differs from federal court proceedings is that federal court proceedings have the right to public access to transcripts, have the right to public access for uh, any sorts of legal filings, any sorts of uh, piece of evidence uh, is entered into the record. You have near immediate access. Uh, after, I would say, several years now of uh, pressure from groups like Reporters Committee for Freedom of the Press, uh, individual journalists, and uh, Freedom of the Press Foundation, we're getting a little bit more sunlight into the proceedings. I think that the, the, if Manning gets sentenced to life, that is going to be a, um, uh, a, a historic day, you know, in, in, the, in the history of our country, but I think also just civilization in general. You know, I, I oftentimes think about the fate of the U.S. I don't know if it's too late. And I'm, I'm not a pessimist. I mean, I, I don't think that I'm, in my own self, in my own life, am, you know, somehow entitled to more liberty than the children that are, you know, making, you know, $2 a year <laughs> building bricks in Bangladesh. You know what I mean? Like, you know, like life is really tough for lots of people. Um, but I do believe that fundamentally um, it is our responsibility, if we do know better, um, to do everything we can um, to dissent, but also to, to do the right thing.